Good morning, Fed Phoenix fam. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, my original channel was called just Fed Phoenix. Um, I recently came home from Outerson and um, I'm having a little trouble reaccessing or like re whatever my um, original YouTube channel. So I have this channel as a backup channel, Fed Phoenix 2. Um, feel free to like the video. If you like it, um, please hit subscribe. Um, hit notifications all if you'd like to see new content when it drops. The original Fed Phoenix channel was um, a pretty in-depth documentation of my journey from target letter to self-surrender. And this channel, Fed Phoenix 2, is, is my journey post-incarceration. So it's kind of like the second chapter of, of, you know, the original journey. So anyway, um, and if you would like to um, donate to the channel support the channel, whatever you want to, however you want to word it. Um, my cash app is the dollar sign and the Phoenix 2020 Phoenix spelled like the city Phoenix. Um, and the T and the P are capitalized. So the Phoenix 2020. So now that we're done with that, let's move on to much more exciting things. So I made a video before I went into Outerson, um, uh, about Outerson and I did my research and I talked to a lot of people, some who had served time in Outerson 30 years ago, some who had just came home a week prior to, to me making the video. And I wanted to have up-to-date information, but also a lot of kind of get a feel for, you know, what, what has went on there, what is going on there, that kind of thing. And I made a video and that video, when I went to Outerson, I found was incredibly accurate. There were a few things that were a little off. Like, um, in the video, I said that you can expect to spend weeks and, um, and kind of like quarant in a quarantine housing unit um, when you come in, you know, due to COVID, um, just COVID protocol or whatever. But when I went in the actual quarantine housing unit, I was in for like four or five months <laughs> and they just continued to add new people to it, of course. But um, so we started out, I was like the 20th person, 24th person in the unit. And by the time the unit got broke up and kind of redistributed throughout the camp, um, there was like a, it was a full unit. There were like 120 something of us. So it was really crazy. All these new people coming in frequently. And sometimes in, in large groups, whenever a plane would come in, you get a large group of people at once. Um, you know, and then you get the trickle in of self surrenders and such. But, um, so that was incorrect in my original video. However, when I left Outerson, um, they were only quarantining people for like five days in a particular unit. And then they would just put them in, in their permanent housing unit. Um, it has been brought to my attention that another wave of COVID uh, has hit Outerson really hard and heavy, much like the one at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. And um, what the current protocol is, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to ask someone I know on the inside and really let you know. But I wanted to make this video and kind of update for those of you going to Outerson um, what the current conditions were when I left, which was um, March 29th. So, a little over a month ago, as of this video. Um, as far as medical care, I know that's a big one for a lot of people. Um, I will say they don't have a doctor on staff. They only have maybe half a dozen nurses, and probably, you know, two or three of them are like part-time, a couple days a week. So, and, you know, these are nine-to-five jobs. Um, and there are hours where the, the medical um, HSU, which is your, your medical kind of building, is just not even... You know, it closes at like 6 p.m. It reopens the following morning at like 6 a.m. So you have a 12-hour gap where there's no on-premises on, on medical care, period. And then you also have the 12-hour gap. You do have it. You have 700 women, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, um, a large percentage with chronic health issues, um, really kind of fighting to, to be seen and be heard and be taken care of. And, and the funding and the resources appear to be, based upon the, the care given, very minimal. So, and then you have these staff who are constantly bombarded, and often by very demanding, rude inmates, um, for medical care that have to follow protocols, and everything is paperwork, and of course they don't document a lot because of that. Um, and I think it's not because the medical staff are negligent. I don't think that that, that really has anything to do with the lack of documentation and follow-up. I think it's there are just not enough hours in a day. And the demand for medical care is, is so, so huge compared to the, the amount of medical care realistically available. Um, so if you're a person with chronic, any type of chronic illness, do what you can for yourself before you get in there. Before I went in, I had my knee injections. I had my, my epidural spine injections. I got a uterine ablation um, to help manage my chronic pain, but and also to minimize my menses because I knew from my time in, in the local regional jail here in West Virginia 
that menstruating while incarcerated can be a struggle in and of itself. Aside from the, the discomfort and the pain and blah, blah. And the regional um, feminine products were, were almost non, non-existent, non-available. And that created a whole hurdle of additional issues for a lot of the female inmates. Now, I will say at Outerson that for the most part, uh, feminine products were readily available. There would definitely be times for like a week at a time, my unit did not have sanitary napkins. So people would steal them from their jobs or or get people from other units who maybe had them to, to sneak them to them. Or even though we weren't allowed to be in possession of the, san the, the institutional sanitary napkins in our lockers, you know, a lot of people would still stash them and risk getting a write-up or getting those confiscated because this was a very real human basic need that they were willing to risk a disciplinary infraction for. And I, I, I'm not gonna say if I was one of those people or not, but I will say that I like to be prepared. And, and you would probably not be shocked if, if we were to just assume, perhaps, that I had gotten some, some from my, my work assignment and, you know, and I kept some stashed at my work. You know what I mean? Because you work five days a week. And so you, you frequently have access to whatever happens to be at your, your job. Um, I happened, I was the front desk person, the clerk for the religious services department, which by the way, was a really good job. It was, you know, for a person with mobility issues and pain issues, it definitely was a job that, that was doable for me under the circumstances. And you have to keep in mind too, one thing I had no idea of when I went to Outer Sin is it is what is called a working camp. So you will work while you're there. That's not negotiable. And I highly advise that if you're going, one of the first things you do is figure out what work assignment would be work best for you and start trying to get into that as quickly as you can. Although typically when people first come in, their initial work assignment is CDR, which is the chow hall, which is down the hill. So if you have mobility issues, that can be rough. Um, and usually they have to do that for like two months before they can try to get a different job assignment. But definitely be very proactive and and identifying and, and obtaining a job assignment that is workable for you, you know, cause you're going to spend a lot of time there and you want your time to go quickly and maybe even get a work assignment that's productive for you. Maybe be a teacher's aide because maybe you feel you have some academic deficiencies and, and this could help you and better yourself. Um, one of the things that, that I would do differently now going to Alderson is before I went, I bought a bunch of books, right? because their handbook online said that you could send in used books. Um, people could send you them in. So I had bought them, I packaged them to ship, I paid the postage, and I was just waiting to self-surrender to go mail them to myself. So when I got to prison, you know, I would pretty quickly get some books to read. Um, first off, what I didn't know that I found out when I got there is you could not, at least at that time, under that warden, which I've heard rumors she may be out now, but I can't confirm that, um, but she would not let people get used books sent in from friends and family. So all that money I spent on postage and books was a complete wash. And then another thing, when I first got there, I had people sending me books. A couple people sent me books. And because you're going to spend a lot of time reading, particularly, you know, when you first, first get there, if you spend any time in a quarantine unit. But in retrospect, that's money that could have went to my, my books, like my inmate account for things that I needed, you know? Um, and I wish I would have had the, the foresight to know, to think about that because at Outerson, they have a library, they have a good size library. And in every single housing unit in the TV room is a bookshelf with free books that other inmates have bought and read and, you know, have no use for that. They've, you know, essentially kind of donated, you know, unofficially to the prison. So there's going to be a, a incredible amount of reading material for you available. And so to spend money on that, you know, unless it's like a, a rare kind of treat occasion for a very specific, you know, piece of literature, don't do it. It's a waste of your money. Um, I've recently been talking to a, a woman who's getting ready to self-surrender and she has a very short bid, you know, and by short, I mean like less than a year. Um, if you have a year or less, they no longer sell MP3s at Outerson. They don't order them to sell them because they started selling tablets. And these tablets are going to cost you over $100 just for the tablet, not for the protector, not any of the, the accessories, earbuds you can hear, none of that. Um, and I'm going to tell you, it's a money trap. It's not Wi-Fi compatible. You can't check your emails on it. Um, it's completely useless in the free world. Even though the radio option, because you know, the MP3 option is kind of off the table, the radio option is like $50. And it literally is like a Dollar Tree stocking stuffer radio. Like the quality, how it's made. It, it looks like something that 30 years ago, your grandmother would have given you as a Christmas gift or someone, you know, would have been kind of a filler, you know, in your stocking. Um, and you're going to pay $50 for that. 
And then you got to buy earbud, earbuds or headphones. So, you know, you're going to have a, a 60 plus $70 investment in things in the free world that would cost you under $3. Um, another thing I want to say is when you get to Outer Sin, one of the first things you need to do once you can access the email system, and it's a secured email system, but I'll get into that in a later video, um, is you want to order your boots. When I was there, the options were, I think, Timberland and Reebok boots. And either pair would cost you nearly $100. But the reality is they're going to put you in institutional boots for work. And until you own your own boots, you're going to be stuck wearing those during your work time. And those boots, some people were able to wear them and did okay. Particularly the very slender um, women. But the majority of people have some issues to some degree with them, whether they give them corns and bunions. A lot of people, myself included, you know, they literally will scrape off the back of your heels and you will have blisters on top of blisters and your, your, you know, the, your heels are bleeding and you're, you're stuffing pads in your boots. You know, you're adhering them to the back and the sides and the toes of your boots and an attempt to try to, to give your feet some level of comfort to be able to function with them on. So immediately go on the email system, send an email to commissary. This is assuming you have money on your books, of course, but send an email to commissary saying what type of boots you want and your particular size. Now keep in mind that they order these. So it may take a while to get them and there's really no exchange situation. So if you're not sure, you know, if they run big or small, or which size is gonna actually fit you, ask some people that are being friendly to you um, to try theirs on. And, and figure out what's a good fit for you because you don't really get a do-over with that. And definitely make sure if you're a self-surrender or if you know you're going to outer send and you're currently being detained and you have people that will put money in your books, um, definitely at least like a month before you go in, start sending money to your inmate account. You want to have money on your books when you get there. And when you self-surrender, you can have up to $300 cash on hand, which may take a while to process onto your books. So you definitely want to have money on your books when you get there, order your boots immediately, immediately. As soon as you can access the email, order them boots. Um, because again, you know, there was at one point where it took months to get them, but then there were times, you know, while I was there where people would order their boots and literally a week later they had them. So it really varies and I don't know what the current weight is. And I know that can fluctuate so much that even if I knew the current weight for boots, it, it would be irresponsible for me to say that that's going to be the standard when you get there. So this is my first of what's probably going to be several parts of, um, you know, my follow up on Outer Sin FPC videos of, of what you can expect. My first one, like I said, was just kind of an overview of things that I had heard from from a variety of people, many that had just came home um, on CARES at the time. But now I'm speaking from experience, so I have a lot more in-depth insights and I definitely intend to give you all a lot of good information and a lot of good tips and, and just... Um, Things to help you maneuver and even those of you who aren't going to outer center or aren't even going to prison and are just curious about what a person in this situation would, would it go through or expect, you know, I, I want to be as informative and thorough as possible. So this is going to be, I'm going to keep these short. I like to keep these, these videos at 15 minutes or less. I think it makes it easier for them to watch. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free to, like I said, like, subscribe. If you hit notifications, hit all because then you'll see, you'll know when new content drops. If you would like to support the channel, my cash app is the money sign, the Phoenix 2020. 2020 is all numbers, like the year 2020. Um, and then the Phoenix is spelled T-H-E, capital T, capital P-H-O-E-N-I-X. So, anywho, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments um, or, any, or any, you know, any questions or comments. Um, I'm, I'm very personable. You know, I, I don't do... Uh, I don't do that whole, uh, oh, what do they call it? Prison coaching. Uh, uh, there's a word for prison consulting. I don't do that. I don't charge people thousands of dollars to answer basic questions and give them basic, you know, you know, give them advice. Because as a person, I know I certainly could never afford that. And I know a lot of people can't afford that. And I don't feel like my compassion or my assistance to you should be based upon what you can do for me financially. However, like I said, I'm more than happy if anyone feels, in, feels you know, um, that they would like to and they can you know comfortably you know donate to the channel support the channel I would much appreciate that um, but even if you can't do that just know that I get it you know we all go through different things and have different struggles and I'm still here for you and no matter what you're going through right now this is just a slice of your life and you will get through it because you have to so goodbye for now Fed Phoenix fam and I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend